It is the Practical Prayer Podcast on New Thought Media Network. Am <laughs> I here? Am I here? An exciting uh, President's Day. That's what we've got going on here. So this is actually the oh. first time you and I have spoken today because you seem to have had some technical something or other going on over there. I have no idea what happened. Everything said I was here and you said I wasn't. Then I didn't hear you. I just do what I always do. Just get out and come back and whatever it is magically fixes itself. Well, God bless. Can you hear me? Am I, I can hear you. Am I fixed? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were healed. <laughs> I, 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 let me go through this whole magic speech and I'm not even fixed. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah, so it's President's Day today, okay. and uh, we have not spoken about what we're going to be speaking about, but that's usually the least of our concerns, because you always have a fascinating topic that, that takes me back to basics. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You ready? Uh, no, let me, let, me, let me just welcome yeah, everybody who is here on, on the New Thought Media Network. Okay. Uh, this is the... Uh, this is like the live studio recording session for the Practical Prayer Podcast. So we're going to chat for a little while now. And if you have a question or a comment, you can put it into the comments on your social media stream, Facebook or YouTube, and uh, we can respond to it there. Or you can go to the website, which is bethelight.com, B-E-the-light.com, spelled just like that. Um, and there's a button on there where you can interact with the Practical Prayer Podcast hosts. Uh, and you put in a question or a comment or a prayer request or uh, whatever seems appropriate over there. And we will respond to it in whatever seems to be the most appropriate manner. And what we're going to do here is um, after we uh, after we finish, finish chatting and deciding what the podcast episode is going to be about, um, then we're going to actually do the recording of the podcast. And uh, you guys get to see how either the magic is made or the sausage is made. <laughs> Depending on how your day is going. <laughs> That's that's your choice, <laughs> magic or sausage. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Well, I mean something else. The sauce will be the saucier. Okay. How we're how we're going to glaze this thing. So, all right. So, what what is our topic going to be today? Well, I was rather fascinated by the talk yesterday on uh, ah. <laughs> star stuff. And, uh, um, yeah, we, we are stardust. Yeah. So then you, you know, we traveled through time and we came to peace of mind. And I think that 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 would, that would be really a good thing to talk about because peace of mind, peace of mind. Yeah, because that's something that is escapes people. And there's a huge need, need for it now. Um, mm hmm. Because, you know, people are still, we're, we haven't found a new normal yet for uh, the post-pandemic thing. And then, and, and that's like four years ago or three yeah. years ago. Yeah. It is and, possible we have found a new normal for post-pandemic, but we're just not happy with it. We just, we're not, yeah, we're not happy or not aware that that's it, you know, there. But the other thing is that there's so many things that are throwing us out of our, our comfort zone, our peace place. Um, the election is coming up, and I'm mm -hmm. surprised at how many uh, references people make to the election affecting this, this, and this. And and I'm not saying it is or it isn't. That's that's not my point. My point is that uh, the the place or point of peace of mind seems to be escaping us now because there are so many things that uh, are here and so easily available to upset us. So. Uh, um, Maybe we could talk about that a bit. Okay. Yeah, and there's... I'm going to save that for the episode. About when we really don't want to feel peace of mind, when we want to maintain our agitation. But let's go ahead and start the podcast okay. episode, and then we will dive into that. So, as usual, a great topic. So uh, let us go ahead and uh, roll the Practical Prayer podcast. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. 
Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And we have I'm another wonderful you know, episode teed up for today. I think so. It just mm. keeps getting better and better, you know, maybe because I'm like this lifelong learner, so I learn from everything. I'm going to find... Well, it something. always surprises me because you, you identify something that has been like just so part of the middle of normal for me for years and years and years. It's like, oh, yeah, that could be a thing. <laughs> Let me just tell you, you, you hit the nail right on the head. No question about it, because you have lived this for how many years? Um, found this teaching in 96, I think. So it's uh, coming up on 30 years. Yes. So it just flows, right? It just rolls off your tongue. It's just your you know, it's your life. It's your thing. It's what you, you know, you live and breathe and it's your language. But for those of us, and sometimes I feel really comfortable and then I talk to you and I think, okay, let me just go back and read again. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. um, we will never exhaust Ernest Holmes. That's for sure. But there are times when I think, you know what, let me just put everything aside and spend like a couple of hours with Ernest Holmes and just get re-centered, you know, because apparently you have forgotten something, girlfriend. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but see, for Read. you, you know, you like know the books and the page numbers and the paragraphs and all that, you know? Only a few of them. Only a few of them. Then I'm like far from a biblical scholar with the science of mind textbook i know a few choice pieces the first four chapters are really really potent and powerful and then the, the next best thing is the glossary because you can find a lot a lot a lot in the science of mind textbook by reading the glossary absolutely absolutely but i'm going to go through those first four chapters i'm going to put it on my list of you know i organize myself so good so i'm going to go do that again <laughs> Yeah, well, it was 1938 that he wrote the beginning of the chapter one, which was, we all look forward to the day when science and religion will walk hand in hand together into the future. And we keep waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think there's a greater acknowledgement, you know, um, on both parts now than there have been before. I mean, at least they're sitting at the table in many ways now where that wasn't the case, because I remember being younger, if you from a religious side of course if you start talking about science well you know you have really blasphemed so <laughs> there was no way the discussion could happen but now you know we're, we're getting there i think yep yep well all the, the the work that i've been doing lately we're teaching a class in um living untethered which is the book by michael singer um and the point that he makes is that uh people think that there's a duel between science and god um, and he points out that it's mostly people's laziness of not committing to one or the other, because if you believe in science, then everything that exists is an absolute freaking miracle. And if you believe in God, then everything that exists is an absolute freaking miracle. And it's just, if you're sitting back saying, well, it couldn't be this or it couldn't be that, and you just want to have it be about the fight, then, uh, you miss, you miss the point. It's pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't get it. You know, like if... God is everything. What's the big deal? Where do you find the separation? Because I think, and and I especially like the um, the name uh, infinite intelligence, which takes everything in. I mean, infinite intelligence is everything. So where is God that science is not? You know, right. to me, it's really very simple. Now, that doesn't mean I'm a scientist and I understand everything, but the whole concept to me is just like, why fight it? You know, just try to understand it. 
because this is it. This is what is. Yeah. Well, and you know, the, the, the great point, as far as I'm concerned, is that uh, they're not in disagreement. We can say that God created the entire manifest universe, and the Big Bang is how God did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is which is which you so eloquently and detailed on Sunday in yes. the star stuff. Like we are stars. We are stardust. Was the talk that stardust. I did, and basically went very briefly through the entire history of time, uh, fourteen billion years that have led up until this moment. And along the way, how absurd it is that we have an opinion about the little tiny fraction of the universe that appears in front of us, and we can say that it's good or bad. It's like, it's an infinite universe, 14 billion light years across, 14 billion years in the making. Our opinion has nothing to do with it. (laughs) What's happening just is happening, and we get to engage with it. And I agree with you. And I also just was rather fascinated at how you brought it. You said 14 billion years? Yeah. How many billion? Okay. And so how you just walked us very quickly through 14 billion years (laughs) up to (laughs) to the point of peace of mind. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Now, we need peace of mind. And I don't have the intellect to trace it back to the Big Bang, so therefore I have peace of mind. Like I'm, I'm walking with you through your, your talk, and I'm good with it because I've heard you do it more than once. Mm-hmm. So I'm, you know, I put on a different hat and I track me. You know, but <laughs> uh, you but humor I'm thinking, me. <laughs> no, not really, really, because it make, it makes sense, and it just makes sense. However, uh, where we are right now help us understand how to have embrace peace of mind because we may not be able to understand it in the sense of being stardust Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah the the idea behind stardust is that everything that exists basically was created at that moment of creation when the big bang banged uh, and it has taken 14 billion years for the matter and the energy to continue to unfold and reveal and interact with itself to get us to the situation that we're in right now. So there's stuff that's happening. That's the technical term, stuff. Ernest Holmes uses that as well. There's stuff yes. that is going on in the world around us. And we get to perceive it. We get to experience it. It is happening in the world around us, and it touches right up against us because we're part of that same star stuff. We're we're creations of that infinite presence and so we're interacting with it and when something happens and we have a preference about it we either lean into it because we like it or we lean away from it because we don't like it Mm -hmm. and it is the leaning in or the leaning away that is our preference where we get the energy and then whatever's happening around us is controlling us internally mindfulness is the ability to observe the stuff that's going on around us and not letting it hook our attention to just be aware of what's going on. Okay, I prefer this. I don't prefer that. I'd like something different to be happening. I'd like this to be happening some more, but I'm not invested in it and putting myself energetically into that. And that's peace of mind. Mindfulness and peace of mind are two sides of the same coin. And and that's perfect because I think that uh, it, it makes sense. Let me see. Let me see how I could phrase it. Um, it makes perfect sense to me because I feel, when I was little, what I used to do, I had, I don't know where I got this from, but I would imagine going to Mars. And I mean, I was real little, so my, the extent of my knowledge was the nine planets that, you know, that we're a part of this solar system. That's a good start. Um, Did I? Yeah. So I would go to Mars and sit there and look down at Earth and things that were happening. And I had had no feeling about it because I was de- I detached myself. It, to me, it was a very real experience, and I can talk mm-hmm. about that some other time. But it's a very real experience. But the whole idea, the principle of it, as I see it now, was to be detached from the thing, you know. And I could look at situations that were going on and be able to understand them uh, as they were or interpreted in my way. 
um, and m perhaps a, a better, more mature way to look at that now or to describe that would be mindfulness. And it's not wooey, you know, it's, it's stepping back and being detached and look at what is so that you're not swept away with the crazy. And, and you can <laughs> swept away with the crazy. Yeah, re really, because you, <laughs> you can you will not can, but you will absolutely lose your peace of mind if you don't find a way to step back, uh, whether it is a little girl going to Mars and looking down at everybody and saying, I'm not part of this, but I can see how this is happening and I can see it more objectively and blah, 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 you know, that way or the more. <laughs> more mature way to uh, practice mindfulness and understand who we are in in this world, right? I'm, I'm a part of you, but I don't have to be a part of your madness. Um, Amen. And, Amen know, to and, that. Yeah. yeah. And that actually what you were doing is, you know, when you were a little girl uh, is the part of a really powerful meditation that I sometimes do, which is a zoom out meditation. We get so wrapped around the axle and the stuff that's going on right in front of us. If we zoom out and realize, okay, there's an entire community that's involved in this and it's affecting some of us, but it's not affecting others of us. And if you zoom out even further, you're now aware it's at a statewide or a nationwide level. It's like, yeah, this thing that's going on is really huge and my life is really in the big scheme of things, not that important. And then you keep zooming out until you're looking at multiple galaxies and it's like, okay, cataclysmic change going on planet Earth, planet Earth, it's really not changing the universe that much. And it gives us some perspective to realize that I don't need to be quite as attached to this as I have been up until now, even if it's something that's, that's really hooked my attention and gotten me involved. Being able to, to zoom out and take that perspective from Mars is huge. It's huge. And part of me, uh, and I don't know when, when this part came alive, but helping other people to find their peaceful place, you know, so they're not, <laughs> to use the street term, so they're not freaked out by every little thing that's going on. And once you're like so energetically involved in the craziness, your world is falling apart. Your world, you know, is, is not whole and your body can become sick because of that. Mm -hmm. So yep. in, in a lot of ways, I, am very conscious of helping others find peace of mind through detaching from, like I said, the crazy that's going on because, you know, what's going on now, the madness that's going on now, two years from now will be something you talk about without a whole lot of energy behind it, anger, you know, maybe some disappointment, but then there'll be some new stuff. And oh, um, there, there will, there will always be new stuff. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. Tell and, you what, let's let's take a let's take a break, and we'll come back and talk more about crazy, crazy making, <laughs> leaning into the crazy, leaning away from the crazy, and not letting the crazy affect us. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn, and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Rev. Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol. Here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. And we're this talking about peace session. of mind. Yeah. And peace of mind is something that happens not because of the circumstances that we're in, but in spite of the circumstances that we're in. It is possible for something really wonderful to happen and we get all crazy about it. Or something that we describe as really terrible to happen and we get all crazy about it. And 
the crazy on either side of that line is what's taking us out of our place of equilibrium and balance and peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know those those kids' toys that you, you you fill up the little punching bag that has the sand in the bottom of it, and you punch them yeah. and it tips over yeah. and then it tips yeah. back up. That is our natural state. Yes, we get pushed around by the stuff that's going on, but our natural state is to return to that place of balance and equilibrium. And if something's going wrong and we're keeping ourselves leaning all this way over that way or leaning all the way over this way, um, it becomes unsustainable. Absolutely. I, I encountered a situation recently, and, and as you were talking, it came back to me very recently, actually. And um, <laughs> some, some madness uh, started, was, was happening. And I looked, and at first, I didn't feel anything, but I thought, I've seen this before. I've seen this a few. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've seen this a few times, and I know that I can't do anything about this because nobody's listening and there's other stuff going on. And so I, I just retreated. I mean, I, was, I stayed in the room, but in, in my little girl language, I went to Mars. And I mm -hmm. just, you know, I said, this will be over soon. And when it is, I'll come back and just pick up where I left off. Uh, that's just the way I do it. You know, and, and um, I, I think you have to be okay with that because if not, you, you will just get carried away. Um, then what happens? Oh, yeah. Especially well, I find that there you can't change. I find that there's, there's very little shortage of people who are willing to invite me to uh, be emotionally and energetically off balance. They'll serve mm -hmm. stuff up and tell me what the problem is and, you know, raise their hands over their head and go, ah, and invite me to buy into it. And I have enough experience buying into it that I know I can do that. I can do that. I can buy in. I can get all wrapped around the axle in whatever the circumstance or situation is. And I also have the ability to look at it from a different perspective. Now, this sometimes gets me in trouble because people say, you're always playing devil's advocate. It's like, hmm not actually playing devil's advocate. I'm just saying that perhaps there's a way of approaching or understanding this that doesn't include the hysteria that you're bringing to it. <laughs> and people who are bringing hysteria very much uh, like to, to like, they, they like an accomplice, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They like somebody who's going to join them in the hysteria rather than say, well, you know what, that's uh, those, the evildoers who you've just identified are probably getting up in the morning trying to do the best they can and it's just not working in a way that's that's harmonious for you. But that takes so much energy away from it. Those, those evildoers, those miscreants, those heathens, those bastards. <laughs> Look at what they're doing. So how does this, you know, if I get a word in edgewise sometime with, with situ, in situations like this, I'll ask a question. How does this help me or you at this point? I mean, mm -hmm. what exactly does this have, have to do with what you're going through, what you're trying to accomplish, your goals, your, you know, your being your higher self, depending on what the, the company is. Um, just how does this have anything to do with that? And I always get the look. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, uh, yeah, she's going to take you higher. No, I'm just asking a question, right? Can you survive without being crazy? And then say, I, can't, I don't have peace of mind about this. Your peace of mind is your responsibility. Not mm -hmm. anybody, not the world's to settle down so you feel good. Oh but yeah, you if you're expecting the world to change so you can be peaceful, it's like, yeah, that's gonna, that, that's gonna be a while. This is 14 billion years to get it to the level of crazy that you're at now. <laughs> so it's probably, it's not gonna be the universe that's taking the next move on this one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so, what exactly is to be accomplished anyway? You know, if we get into the madness, are we going to unmad it? I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. There are three <laughs> magical little words that can be tremendously helpful um, and accomplish the same thing that asking a question does. Um, and it's usually when somebody's talking about 
this is awful and these people hate me and this is never working and I never have enough money and I'm always sick and etc 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 and the three magical words are up until now the, the entire mm -hmm. story that we're telling is stuff that's happened up until now up until now, up until now. okay and that's sort of the, the pause and saying okay if you were to write the next page or the next chapter or the next volume in this story would you be repeating that up until now story and continuing along with all the things that you're lamenting now, or would you write something different? Mm -hmm. And it's a reminder that we're creative beings and we can write something different. We can choose something else. We can let go of our attachment to the things, the horrible way those bastards have been treat, treating us and the things that they've taken away and how we're so victimized and so oppressed and it's never, never gonna get any better. Yeah, well, it's, the, the past isn't gonna change. The past is not gonna get any better, but right now transformation is at hand there's an infinite creative power that creates everything and it's able to create something new and spectacular starting right now it doesn't even need a wind-up <laughs> the, the story can go from horrible to spectacular like instantly you go what happened how did that happen we have no idea how it happened it just happened and it's within your power to do that you know it's you can change it's like changing the subject in a set in a way mm -hmm. um, i'm just not going to go down this this road um even without saying it but i'm you there's a there's a uh a word i don't want to say a term but a word that you use in prayer that really triggers it for me and it, it's just the trigger the, the word turn away from and mm -hmm. i just love that because it it get, makes me feel i have the power to turn away from this or not. And it really starts and stops right there for me, you know, because I, I'm incredibly, people People say you're the most calm and incredibly peaceful person I know. And you're, you know, they used to call me the coolest preacher as though nothing upsets me. It does, it does. But those words that you say, and, and I'll be, admit they are not words I used <laughs> but turn away. I have power to turn away from this. I'm just yeah. not getting into this with you or with not you as a person, but I'm just not getting into this. I can't. Do right. It. One, I don't if like the way it makes me feel. Yeah. Imagine yourself being in a room with, with multiple movie screens. And on one movie screen, there is a train wreck in progress, screeching, grinding, flames, all the rest of that. And on another one, there's puppies playing and on another one there's a beautiful sunset and on another one there's hunters going after their prey well, all of these things are available to us and the thought that oh my god the train wreck is going i have to watch every detail of it and get completely absorbed in it look at the puppies turn away from the train wreck and look at the puppies because the yes. puppies make you feel the way you choose to feel the train wreck is still going on it doesn't have anything to do with you exactly and you yeah. can do that you know you can do that it's it's like i don't was i don't know if we were talking one time about movies but maybe it was you or somebody else you don't have to watch the stupid thing if it's not if it's making you feel uncomfortable or you know it, it, you don't have to watch it you could be 15 minutes into it you don't owe the anybody anything to watch it to the end just switch the channel Mm -hmm. You know, and I, but let me say this and I'll stop. Maybe you have to have a reason. For me, it was incredibly important above all else to have a peaceful household where my kids could feel happy and not be worried and all stressed out. Everything had to line up with that. I made mm -hmm. choices, you know, that that's how it has to go. They talk about that now. I just would wonder why people would or would hope that people could choose to be calmer because the crazy, like I said, it's going to happen. It's going to continue to happen until it doesn't. Yeah. And it could and change the, at any time. And the crazy will happen whether we're buying into it or not. Mm -hmm. The crazy happens and we jump in and go, you know, full Monty. <laughs> then we become part of the crazy. <laughs> and if we watch the crazy and go, yeah, there's some crazy going on over there. And I'm going to prioritize my, peace of mind and equanimity 
and I'm going to understand that the crazy is going to go along as it's going to, as long as it's going to go on. There may be an opportunity for me to rush in and join the first responders to help the folks who are getting caught up in the crazy, but I don't have to get in, in, involved in the uh, in the vortex myself. It's always a choice. Mm -hmm. Always, always. I l I like the screens. Did you say movie screens or Zoom screens? You said movie screens. Movie screens, but you can yeah you can do it with with Zoom as well. I'm using the movie screens. I like that. Okay. Yeah, that one's perfect. Uh, did you see um, how I lit up when you talk about the, about the puppies? Yeah, that's always yes. like a peaceful. Just find a place, you know. <laughs> just find a place. Yeah. God, I'm and sorry. There, just... We all have a place. You know, puppies is a pretty easy one. Mm -hmm. You know, gorgeous spring days is another one. It is really easy to see God on a gorgeous spring day. In the middle of mudslides, takes more work. I freely admit that. Yeah. The, the The outside props definitely uh, have uh, have some influence on us. But because we know it's possible on a gorgeous spring day, it's always going to be possible. It's about what we bring to it. Let's take another break, and when we, uh, when we resume, we will do a prayer on peace of mind and up until now. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today, and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just five ninety-five a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now at GodCall.org. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. Podcast. I'm tongue-tied today. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. I've been having a wonderful conversation about everything from the nature of the universe, 14-some billion years in the making, uh, and being... Uh, peaceful and uh, in a state of peace of mind about whatever it is that is going on or has been going on. So it's not really, it's a big picture, but it's not a big ask. So let's do a prayer. Let's do a prayer based on that. And the prayer is based on the pivot. And the pivot, the, the trigger for the pivot is up until now. When we describe a situation or a circumstance or an experience that we've been having, that is our true understanding, our historical record of what has happened. And it has happened up until now. This present moment is the opportunity for it to all either continue or for it all to change. And if we have an assumption that it's going to continue, then what we're doing is we're po focusing our energy on continuing the problem, about continuing the drama, being victimized, being undermined about whatever the challenges or difficulties are that we've been having. If, on the other hand, we realize that all of that is coming in as an indicator, as a story, as evidence of what we've been experiencing previously, we can make a conscious choice to no longer be engaged in the story and to instead invite something different and be peaceful about where we are. So as it's comfortable to do so, I invite you to close your eyes. And that lets us turn away from the details and the story and the drama that's been surrounding us and filling up our entire field of view for as long as it has and realize that this next moment can be different. The next breath that we take can bring in something brand new. It is possible for transformation to happen and it's never more than a breath away. So as you breathe into that, breathe in that feeling of peace and of harmony and of uplift and of calm. Understand what peace of mind means to you. That space of balance, and equanimity and okayness, not running away from a problem that has been there or eagerly trying to attract something that's been elusive. Be peaceful in this place at this time, right here and right now. 
in, in that space of peacefulness and peace of mind, we invite in something new. We turn our attention to that infinite creative power that has created everything. It's created all of the experiences that we've had so far. It's created this present moment now. And it's in the process of creating what's next for us. And it's already unfolding. So as we let go of our attachment to what has been and open to what's new, to what's possible, to what we're desiring instead, that infinite creative power is already responding. It's already saying yes to the good that we're opening ourselves to. And it happens, not necessarily in a timeline or a manner that we would define or understand. It can happen instantaneously. That transformation can be so sudden that when we look back on it and say, I have no idea how that possibly could have happened, but there it was, and it's all written down in my diary, and the experience that I'm living now is a result of that transformation. That good is that close by. We get to invite it in, to breathe it in, to allow ourselves to be guided into what to do next, what's our part, to be active in, what's our part to release, and let the rest of it go, inviting that infinite creative power to create this next experience of newness for us. And it's saying yes, and the good is underway. And it's different for each one who's listening to this prayer, because we've each had different experiences up until now. So what's coming next is going to be different for each of us but the same way for all of us, that same activity of divine goodness unfolding and revealing and expressing itself in and through and as our lives. I'm so grateful for this goodness. I'm so grateful for the transformation. I'm grateful for the stories we get to hear about just exactly how wonderful this process is. I had my whole life up until then, and suddenly now, bam, the good is at hand. It's unfolding now. And so with gratitude for all of this good, I speak this word and I release it into that creative law, the one that creates everything. And I know it now is creating this. And so with a deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word, I let it go, and I know it's so. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. And that's episode number 141 of the Practical Prayer Podcast. We had a comment from uh, Hamid who said, I have to be what I desire. So if I desire peace of mind, I must become peaceful. Oneness, no separation between peace and peaceful. Amen. That's it. That's the way that it works. We get, if, we, if we want to see it, we get to be it. Yeah, that's, and I was thinking about this uh, couple of a, a lot of the couple of days when I was in seminary uh, this was kind of the point at which I said okay I will just do I'll regurgitate what you want but <laughs> there's no thought involved here I, I, I wrote this yeah, it's like 15 page paper and it came back with all this red on it and notes and I'm thinking you know I, I'm not even that smart you know and you got all this red stuff but the whole thing was um, I've always been an advocate of thinking and taking responsibility for your behavior. Um, I, I did not, I was not articulating it in terms of new thought or anything like that. I just felt like God gave you a brain, so uh, obviously <laughs> you're supposed to use it. And, <laughs> well, at and, least that's an option. Yeah, and, and I did not get any love whatsoever for that, and just real angry this person was. Uh, the professor was and he said you know you're taking all the power and uh, responsibility away from jesus and god and i'm thinking yeah i guess <laughs> <laughs> but i you know i was suddenly was being accused of something that i didn't know how to defend it was just my thought on it 
And do you know what? I just never gave it up. I said, okay, if that's what you want, fine. But it makes sense to me that with everything, your peace of mind, even though there's stuff outside uh, um, in the world that's that's crazy, I mean, I just don't have to take on take it on. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, so you are responsible. And I was very reluctant uh, from that point on to speak my mind uh, publicly about certain things because, you know, I didn't want to get squashed for like trying to discredit, <laughs> disempower Jesus um, or God or anything. But um, it's not that. It's it's the power we've been given. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. And he, Jesus said, all this I do, you can do and more. He did not say, everything that happens to you is because I did it. That would that would have been different. <laughs> very different. Very different. That would, yes. Would have yes, been very yes. different. Yeah. Yeah, well, you so, just yeah, we are careful what you say. What do you say? <laughs> well, because it's liable to throw somebody else out of their space of equilibrium and peace of mind. And then the question is, is that my job? No. Right, but if your peace of mind depends on a certain thing, what happens when that thing changes? Bingo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we can yeah, keep talking about this weird. forever. Yeah. Well, it's it's like uh, it's the external thing and the internal thing. You know, it it applies almost to everything. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And if I can be peaceful regardless of what's going on around me, then I can make good choices about how I want to engage in what's going on around me. And if I'm more all hysterical and reactionary, then I'm going to be reacting to the stuff that's going on inside of me, and it may or may not have anything to do with what's going on around me. Something will happen, it'll make me crazy, and then I'll respond in crazy. And I've seen that happen. Mostly I've seen it happen in other people, but I know for a fact it happens in me too. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Well, you, you know what? It, it, it really, I tell you what else, I'll tell you what really motivates me about this too. It gives you time so if if you're the one who's the crazy <laughs> you get a chance to figure it out before you're out there getting all embarrassed um it just gives you time to mm -hmm. to assess the whole thing i i am not big on public embarrassment i'm telling you i can be controlled by that okay okay so you've done that before and you don't need to do it anymore now, listen if you i don't even, i don't even know if i have but if you're going to blackmail me about <laughs> something Right. Listen, I'm confessing to whatever it is. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, good to have a plan. But, but, the, but the thing is, you got to like, just just take your time. <laughs> just take your time. Make sure that you don't have anything to be blackmailed about. <laughs> that works, too. All yeah. right. Let us, uh, now that we've gotten from the Big Bang to blackmail, um, <laughs> let's wrap this sucker up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you carol okay. thank you everybody joining us on new thought media network we're here on mondays at one o'clock eastern uh, i think 11 o'clock uh, mountain time which is the uh, home of the thing uh, again if you have any uh, comments questions or input you can put them at be the light.com be-the-light.com carol thank you as always thank you please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors including the hefferlin foundation Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, One Heart Retreats, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Kitchener, Unity Spiritual Center, Ottawa, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living, Satya Center, Begin Within Ministries, Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, and the Center for Spiritual Living, Seattle, as well as all of our individual donors. 
Thank you for being part of the New Thought Media Network. Please like, share, and subscribe. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring.